welcome to Financial Fridays. I'm your host, Glenn Cleland, AKA the intellectual venture capitalist. I've gone from investing in stocks to investing in students. Our topic today is risk controlled active management. So why should you listen to me? Well, I've got not only institutional buy side experience in part of the former senior manager, senior equity portfolio manager at NBIMC, but also being a we capital markets associate. Also have my CFA charter. Little shameless plug, the flagship of the Center for Financial Studies is the Student Investment Fund. We're the first in the Atlantic region. We were profiled in the National Post. What we're talking about today, enhanced indexation, risk control, active management. Because of that, we were profiled in the Globe and Mail. When I left in 2017, we were number one undergraduate program in Canada. The only Canadian university to use risk control backward management with the CFA curriculum embedded in the program, one of a kind in the world. Now we've got four key indicators in the SIF, portfolio performance, CFA pass rates, university competitions, SIF graduates. Today we're going to focus on portfolio performance. Now the MBIMC hired the Student Investment Fund way back in 1998 and under Canadian Balance Fund mandate. Fancy name for investing in stocks and bonds more or less in Canada, although they were allowed to go 10% outside Canada. Our key benchmark weightings, 50% equities, 45% fixed income, 5% cash. Our benchmark was the TSX 60, and we could go plus or minus 5%, but we had to beat our benchmark by 80 basis points. There's a, a Scotia McLeod all government index for the bonds. We go plus or minus 5% with a total portfolio of 25 basis points returns. The bottom line is we had to outperform by 50 basis points. <clears throat> now our portfolio performance in the year the book is in 2008, we outperformed by 83 basis points, or excuse me, 78 basis points of which 83 came from the asset mix decision, which we'll, we'll talk about separately, the tactical asset allocation decision. But what we found was, or what we used was the risk control of active management. We actually had a student, MBA student, who did a thesis on the risk control of active management. His opening line was a comment from Bob Bertram, quote, well, we've done what conventional wisdom suggests is impossible, but portfolio theory says, deliver higher returns with lower risk. And it was based on an article by Penich and Benefits Canada and it really promoted or forced us to think, how long will it take to discern if a manager can add value through skill? Now in our case, because we're looking at Canadian fixed income and Canadian equity, the 25 to 50 basis points, according to statistics, it would take a minimum of 16 years to prove on the fixed income side, 17 years of Canadian equity. What's interesting is we're trying to get into other mandates the U.S. equity, just a 50 to 100 basis points, it would take 157 years. And really that's a, a show that it's such an a efficient market. There's no asymmetric advantage in information. On an international basis, not quite as bad. But what was interesting also in this article, it said, if you had a tracking error that was less than 2%, tracking error, what is your standard deviation compared to your benchmark? Over a 10 year period, if you have less than 2% tracking error, you have a 94% probability of outperforming or 6% probability of underperforming. And the key takeaway from this article is if you reduce your tracking error, this will increase the probability of success. And that's what we were using in this student investment fund program, risk control of active management. So enhanced indexation. So you take a look at the first column, it's got indexing, second one's active management. The third one's enhanced indexation. The point here, you don't expect any alpha or excess return over your portfolio. Your tracking error is almost none because it's the same as a benchmark, so you have no information ratio. The reason you hire active management, supposedly they're going to add expected alpha over your portfolio benchmark return. But the tracking error or how they get that return oftentimes has a high tracking error. So your information ratio, expected alpha divided by tracking error is usually 0 0.5. The genius of enhanced indexation is you reduce your expected alpha by to 0.5 to 
So it's not as high as active management, but the trick is the tracking error is so much lower that that it gives you an information ratio of 0 0.5 to 2. That's the genius in enhanced indexation. So it's similar information ratio, but less risk with enhanced indexation. MBIMC's guidelines, key takeaway, uh, can introduce enhanced indexation on equities, but impossible on fixed income. Why? Just because you've got the TSX 60, so that's easy to replicate. But the SMAG had over 600 different fixed income holdings. So equity returns with bond-like volatility, that's the beauty of risk control of active management. We separated the enhanced indexation into beta neutral versus an alpha generator. The beta neutral, we tried to replicate the market by, by buying a cash basket, fancy name for we bought all 60 stocks, the same weighting as it was in the benchmark, 60. And then we also bought ETFs, and so that was our beta portfolio. Not quite as sophisticated as MBIMC, who also used swaps and futures to replicate the market but we didn't have that level of sophistication. The alpha portfolio, we went long a stock, short another stock, offsetting <clears throat> to give us our alpha portfolio. This was 15% of the portfolio. We had a maximum of 15 positions, positions maximum 1% in each. Because what we found professionally was shorting by definition is the riskiest thing out there. So you want to reduce the size of the bet, but you have a whole bunch of bets. So the finance 101 myths buster. There's this idea that return is a function of alpha plus beta plus error term. The error term or unsystematic risk can be eliminated through diversification. We've seen academic studies showing that that's anywhere from 15 to 20 stocks. But the beta or market neutral risk cannot be eliminated. Well, this is wrong. If you go long a stock with a beta of 1.5 and short a beta of 1.5, then you get zero market risk. So not too sure how well this is going to show up. But on this chart, which is a famous chart, your market portfolio line is your solid line. What we're showing is you can actually have a return above that line by using market neutral, where as long as your longs are outperforming your shorts, you win. So it changes the shape of the market portfolio. So that's that. and changes the shape of the return pattern. So what you've got here on the left is inherent returns. On the right is enhanced indexation. So basically it reduces your volatility but improves your expected rate of return. Now, the SIF approach wasn't a true overweight, but paired bets mentally. So we had a dollar neutral. So every stock that you wanted to overweight, you had to underweight some other stock in that group. We were sector neutral. So if let's say you had oil and gas and you had 10%, you wanted to overweight one stock, 1% maximum. You had to underweight another stock, 1%. Now, we didn't have the software to actually make sure that we were totally book beta neutral offsetting. But because we only allowed bets in the same sector, then we felt that there was a close proximity to the beta because they, they mirrored each other. The size of the bets, we reduced the size of the bets because of the sheer risk of shorting. So our experience, uh, ideally we wanted to go long, to go up, the short to go down, and we started looking at the success ratio. What was the ratio or success of our paired bets that it make money? Then we looked at the longs separately, shorts separately. What was interesting is what we found was in an up market, both long and short went up and a down market, both went down. We also started trying to do cross border bets, taking advantage of the 10%. And so the problem was we couldn't get rid of the currency risk. So you no longer had just stock selection attribution, but now you had currency attribution. We had a student who did a report on our risk control of active management. He did it in the end of 2003. And he took a look at the tracking error, look at our total fund tracking error and then the equities. What he found was that the UNB Student Investment Fund is successfully using enhanced indexation currently used by Canadian pension funds. This is what led to our <clears throat> three time uh, win in the RISE competition, Redefining Investment Strategy Education, because it was on a risk adjusted basis. This year, that's being shown in this picture, we only had a 41% rate of return. Another school had a 120% rate of return. The trick though, is we had a tracking error that year of one to 1.25% versus their tracking error was 6%. And that's why we won because our information ratio was so much higher. So that's why we, we actually uh, outperformed over 200 different universities out there because they're focusing on the alpha, but not on the risk reduction. What happened was because we had some folks from other universities, they started realizing what a great job we were doing. We were getting letters from other universities saying something like, it is very clear to me that the University of New Brunswick Fredericton is one of the best running classes anywhere. That was from no less than a professor from the Sam Walton School of Business 
tell me they didn't have great access to resources. And then that led, we can find it here. Somewhere here I got it. Here it is. That led to an article in the Globe and Mail by Andrew Willis. UMB students learn investing and make nice return beside in a 2004 article. Quote, the student investment fund has moved to the cutting edge to develop what's known as an enhanced index approach to the equity market. So he talked about how we were teaching the students about hedge fund approach. So bottom line is <clears throat> enhanced indexation provide equity returns with bond-like volatility. The equity portfolio we divided into beta portfolio and alpha. The beta we replicated the market by buying, having a cash basket, buying everything plus ETFs. The alpha one is used as market neutral, which is a portfolio construction technique. But the market neutral doesn't tell you what to invest in. And that's why our next slide is gonna be on how did they come up with their ideas or idea generation. So there you have it on risk controlled active management. That's the long and the short of it. <clears throat> Remember to work hard, play hard. And as I told students, it was always in my wallet, especially those SIF graduates who are watching in, Remember, 100 years from now, it won't matter what your bank account was, what kind of house you lived on, what kind of car you drove, but you might make the difference in a young person's life. So cheers and look for the next video on the next Financial Fridays. Cheers. <laughs>